I think they can beat the Clippers. I, I do, think, too. I think we're watching the best scoring duel in NBA history. I agree. I mean, when you see what Luka's doing, we already know what Kyrie, who Kyrie is, probably the, the greatest one-on-one -on -one player. If you have a one-on-one -on -one competition, I'm taking Kyrie. <laughs> and, and, and so, yeah, I know the Clippers beat them a couple years ago. They didn't have Kyrie. But since All-Star break, they've been one of the best defensive teams. They have. Ranking opponents field goal eighth. Mm -hmm. They're scoring better. I mean, they have all the ingredients of a team that can get to the finals. And you have a top five player MVP candidate, arguably the best player in the league. You have experience, Kyrie's championship experience. And so I do believe, I do believe the Mav have a shot. Yeah. If I have to choose between them and the Clippers, I'm taking them right now because I don't know. It's uncertainty of Kawhi right now. Yep. Uh, we just know the flame outs of players in the playoffs that just don't come up big. You know, there's times where we James just... James Harden. <laughs> James Harden, we've seen that from him. How many George. times? So I got more faith in a Luka-led and Kyrie-led team. Yep. So they got the ingredients, Skip, to get to the finals, I believe. They got the ingredients, but can they keep it together and play consistent enough? Because nobody's going to stop them. They got to be able to defend at a high level in the playoffs if they're going to go far. But as far as getting out the first round and beating the Clippers, I think they will. They, they got an opportunity and a chance, especially if Paul George is not at full strength. I mean, uh, Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard. Leonard? <clears throat> Kawhi Leonard's not at full strength. I give them an opportunity. But the, if the Clippers' deck is stacked and they got all their stars aligned, they're not going to beat them. And I know 2020, 2021, different teams, though. Very good. Yeah, it was different teams. Luka was there. He's a long man standing. But for the most part, those, those teams are over with. Especially Dallas is way yeah, different. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's a different, yeah. different situation. Different identity. When yep. we talk about flaming out for James Harden, because that's going to come up. He doesn't play big in the playoffs. We're talking about the first round. We're not talking yeah. about the second, the third, no, I mean, that's the fair. finals. I, I got it. We're talking about yep. the first round. And when you look at his first round statistics and you look at what he's been able to do in the first round of the playoffs, he's James Harden. He's been James Harden. So I don't get all spooked about whether or not he's going to show up. His role is different now. Yeah, he, yeah, that's true. His role is that's different. True. Westbrook role is different. We're going to talk about that later we on. We are. And Paul George has carried this team a couple of years ago, the Clippers, not this constructed team, but the Clippers minus Kawhi Leonard. He yeah, took them all the way to the Western three, Conference three Finals. Years. He was, so he has he, the ability. He was outstanding. He has the ability to be goal. able to do that. Now, yep. look, I know that they, the Mavs have gotten slightly better after All-Star break. Okay. First of all, look at the opponents that they were playing. They were not playing no juggernauts in these 16 or 18 games that they've won. There's really not any... I mean, you could maybe cherry-pick, hand-pick three, four good teams in that mix, but for the most part, they were, it was layups. It was teams that was on the borderline of play-in, teams that were not making the playoffs. Those are the type of teams that that defense increased against. Now you're going up against a high-octane offense that can score. You got mm -hmm. three dudes... If, if healthy, now this is all about an if, that can score and match point for point. You say, okay, well, you can counsel whatever, Luka out with Paul George, and you can counsel Kyrie out with, with Kawhi. But now you still got X factors. You got a high-octane, speedy Gonzalez and Westbrook that can give you a whole bunch off the floor. And then on top of that, you still got to count for James Harden. Mm. And, and defensively, who you going to stop? That's my whole thing. Who are you going to stop defensively? They have a shot. Everybody has a shot. I just don't think they... I think they come up short. I think this will be the most exciting first round, though. Oh, I, oh. Think. I, I, I am think so. so with you. I can't wait. But More Keyshawn, exciting than the Lakers and the Nuggets? If we get there? But we're just talking about it's as exciting a first round yeah, as you can ever I mean, remember. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every matchup all the yeah. way through the play-in I mean, is star unbelievable. star power in this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got elite scoring in this. I'm yep. talking about James Harden. I mean, at his best, Kawhi, Paul George, oh, Luka. Stacked. Kyrie. I mean, you got five of the greatest scores in one series. Now that you just said that, I wonder what the <laughs> average scoring... At their peak. If you just look at 20, all of them at their peak of scoring... 28, 20 points, no. 28 points a game at their peak. All right, Keyshawn, I think you've been watching Dallas. I don't think you've been seeing what you should see. Okay. Something has changed dramatically yeah. there since they added P.J. Washington and mm -hmm. Daniel Gafford at the trade deadline to the starting lineup. 
And by the way, that kid out of Duke who's seven feet, one inches tall, Derek Lively, was giving them some hustle and muscle yeah, for is. a while, and he's been out with a knee issue. And I'm not sure if he's back for the playoffs, but maybe. But it doesn't matter at this moment because what they did last night to what is still a very dangerous Miami team at home, and I know both teams were back-to-back, -back, but I look up early on, and Dallas is ahead by 25 yeah. at Miami. It's hard to do because they're a proud bunch, man, especially at home. Miami, going into that game, was averaging at home 112 points a game. They managed to score 92 points last night. That's 20 points below their home average. You got to see what you're seeing. You, you got to believe what you're seeing because that means Dallas is playing at least a semblance of defense. And I told you yesterday, the stat over the last 17, now 18 games is Dallas is holding its opponents to 44% shooting. That's number one in the NBA over the last 18 games. And if you want to give me nobodies that they're playing, give me nobodies. But it's still the Where NBA. Where would Miami be if they was in the West? Where would they be? Out of the play in. Out of the play in. I don't know, but I wouldn't mess with <laughs> out of the, them. Skip, hey, the guy just told me to my left, out of the play in. Yeah, but this, You're that's... telling me about the Miami team where Jimmy yeah. Buckets had 12 points. He only mm -hmm. shot eight times. Okay. They'll be right at the cusp Maybe of that's head. because of some defense. <laughs> so I'm seeing a Luka and a Kyrie who made peace with each other. And I don't know. It took a long time because I'm yeah. going to remind you, last year, this team won 38 games and missed the playoffs. Missed the playoffs. Now they're a 50-win team, which should at least put Luka in the MVP conversation. And if you want to discount him because he's got that sidekick who sometimes is the one to his 1A on any given night. Everybody got a sidekick. Yeah. Okay, but this, this is the sidekick to me. Mm -hmm. They have made some kind of connection where after they, on Sunday night, they they stormed back from 20 down to beat Houston, albeit just Houston, but they did that. They scored 148 points, and they left the court arm in arm, if we can see this. And they look Jason, like they're having fun. Yeah, it, Jason Kidd's brought this up a couple times because he thought that was real. You, you can laugh at it and say it's all for show, but we haven't seen that before. I didn't see it any last year because there's no way they're doing that last year mm -hmm. because they were... They were wary of each other. They were eyeing each other in the fourth quarter. Is it your turn or my turn? And all of a sudden, they have figured out how to play together and to respect each other and to vibe off each other. And when they're doing that, they are as dangerous as it gets. Now, if you allow me to, I got to talk about Daniel Gafford because nobody else is talking about him. You realize in the month of March, he went on a roll and made 33 straight field goals in NBA games. It's hard to do to make 33 in a row because the rec he was just one short of the record of Wilt, 34 in a row. As we speak, he's now made 22 in a row more. So he's gone from 33 in a row in March, and now he's on a streak where last night he was six out of six. That, that boosted him up to 22 in a row field goals made. He is running away with the percentage from the field this year. He's 73% of his shots he's made from the field. He, again, they acquired him at the trade deadline. He bounced around, been a bit of a journeyman, but even for his career, he shoots 71%. So Luca trusts him. Luca will give him shots that last year Luca wouldn't give anybody. And PJ Washington has brought them a veteran banger presence. He just knows how to play basketball, and he plays grown man basketball. He plays strong, and all of a sudden, those two have solidified the starting lineup, and then you got Kleber coming off the bench with Dante Exum and Tim Hardaway Jr. and Josh Green and maybe Lively, and all of a sudden, they're looking like a 10-deep team that is going to be a threat to win the West. Mm -hmm. If they keep playing at this level, it's, it's hard to beat them when they're playing defense like they're playing defense. And maybe it's just a semblance of defense, but they, they used to play no defense. Now it's clear they're taking pride in that, that end of the floor. I just think they're legit as they can be because Luka looks like he's grown up before your very eyes. Last year, he was a powder. He was a whiner. He was a diva. He'd sulk. He, he'd, you know, okay, you got Kyrie. Let him close the games. And now it looks like he's growing up. It, it looks like, remember, he just turned 25 years of age a month ago, so he's just a month into his 25th year on this planet. And, and he looks 
like a veteran to me now. He plays veteran basketball. And Paul, I don't know if, if you've ever seen anything like him. He actually has an old man's game to me, mm -hmm. and it works. It just He's just hard to time up. He, he's hard to defend because it's herky-jerky, and he's doing things somewhere on this plateau that no one's ever done them before the way he's doing it. He's just hard to defend, and, and he's going to... He's going to get you a triple-double almost every game because that's what he's been averaging through the streak. He's going to get you 10 and 10 along with 30-odd points. Yeah, they got a chance. He's the only one. When I look at the Western Conference, he's the only one that can offset the Joker, just numbers-wise. You can take, say like we, you'd say like you have them in a matchup because they lined up the second round. If they see each other, they both win. Denver wins, obviously, the first round along with Dallas. If they match up, and this is what's talked about all the times. If you got two superstars that can kind of take each other out the game, then what's left? You got Kyrie now versus Jamal Murray. So say Joker has a 28, 10, and 10. You figure Luka can offset that. And there's nobody else in that Western Conference that can do that. So say you take away Joker's numbers, now I need the rest of y'all to show up. They can beat, they can, they can play with Denver when you got a player like that. Like, I don't see nobody, LeBron, uh, I don't know who else can offset Anthony Edwards. They're not going to put up the same numbers as Joker. So a healthy AD could. I agree. AD maybe a, maybe a, maybe he can neutralize. Yeah, he can give you a 30, 15 game. I mean, it won't match the assists. But you talk about a guy can completely take his numbers and offset them. Now you're left with the rest of these matchups. Can Dallas other players win their matchups versus the Denver Nuggets when well, you do the math? That's why I said can they win the matchups against the Clippers? A healthy Clipper team. You, that's why I said when you <clears throat> when you go around and you look at the three main cogs for them. Let's just say yeah, Luca can offset two of them. Let's say Kyrie <laughs> and and Luca can offset Paul George and a healthy Kawhi. But you still got to defend and deal with James Harden. Whether you like him, his style, his clubbing, whatever it is, you got to find somebody for him. Then you got to find somebody for Speedy Gonzalez in Westbrook. <laughs> you got to find somebody for that. That's hard. You mentioned you mentioned Jamal Murray and Luca. I mean Jamal Murray and, and Joker. But then they still got to figure out what to do with Portis if he get hot. Not Portis. Um, Michael Porter Jr. Michael Porter Jr. Jr. If he gets hot. Aaron Gordon. Then Aaron Gordon. Aaron if he Gordon gets needs Luca though. I mean Aaron no. Gordon needs Joker. That's they, they, that's his connect. Yeah, but but I'm saying though. They they still run deeper than yeah. Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Luca would have to score, in my opinion, he would have to have just crazy performances on a record breaking. He just side. gotta be average. You know what his average is? What? 35, 9 and 9. <laughs> that average. That's a that's a bad, that's a down night. If he's great, it's a problem. If he's great, <laughs> if he's greater than 34, which he usually is, he's usually a better player in the playoffs. <clears throat> than he is in the regular season, then it's going to be a problem for the Clippers. And that's why they're a contender. They have an MVP caliber player, if not arguably the best player in the league. And I can see them making a deep playoff run. I don't know what's going on with Kawhi. It's like, I yeah, feel I like we get to this happened. point every year with the Clippers, uh, Paul George and Kawhi. I don't know if they're going to be healthy. It's like the same song, the same story every year. You go, it's like a repeat. Uh, and... and and so I just don't, I don't know. I don't have the face, so I got to go with Mavs. I, yeah, I, got, I, more trust. I, got, I got more trust in Luka and Kyrie this no, year. I get they the look health different. Is always a problem. And yeah. this is the time of the year that you want to be playing well. And they're playing, they're probably the best, they're playing the best basketball out of anybody in the NBA. Why when we get here, Kawhi just all of a sudden fall apart? <laughs> Literally, every year feels is. that way. Yep. Okay, so Joker was extraordinary last year, especially in the fourth quarter, as they did it again to Minnesota. And when, when it's time for them to play, they play. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they look like they're going to have the one seed, and we'll go deeper into them in just a few minutes. But it's hard to argue against Joker for MVP because he's, yeah. he's doing it again at the same levels that he's done it before. But again, I stress to you, Luca has improved dramatically from three and the free throw line this year. He was 34% from three last year, and all of a sudden he's 38. That's a big jump, and that makes him much more dangerous when he's hitting that shot. His free throws, he used to be awful. He was 74% like LeBron, and now he's up to 79%. That's a 5% boost. That's pretty significant. And 
you look at again the team they missed the playoffs with 38 wins now they got 50 so then you got Shea Gilgis in Oklahoma City they made the playoffs last year the play in with 42 wins they're up to 55 wins okay mm -hmm. and it's a lot about him even though they got a right. nice young team but Paul, of those three, can you still? It's it's very close to me. <sighs> it's close. Joker is just tried and true. It's hard to argue against him because he just keeps doing the same thing every year, and you just say, "Well, I give it up." You know, so like, Joker is the popular pick for MVP, and I and I've I've gone back and forth over the last few weeks, and then I watched like the game last night, and I was like, "Wow, he sold up the MVP." But when I dive deeper into it, I can't believe what Shea Gilgis is doing. Like seriously, bro. Like, who's his second best player? J Dub? J Dub? Jalen Williams? Yeah. Is this or, or Shaq? G Giddy is pretty Giddy, good. Who's their second? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So when I look at the MVP caliber players or the guys who are in the talks, who's Luca's second best player? He has Kyrie to lean he on. He does, and so that it, it's <laughs> almost like it disqualifies him. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then when I look at the Joker, Jamal Murray, he has him to lean on. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't had him all year. He hasn't had him no. for a lot of portion yeah. of the year, but as they're not in the same caliber as those guys, what I'm saying. So I'm thinking that Shea has less to, to work with. He does. He has less to yeah. work with than these other guys who we talk about in MVP conversation. So I'm so back and forth with it because beginning of the year, my expectations for Denver was like, oh, they probably win the West. Uh, my expectations for Dallas was like, oh, they're going to be a playoff contender. My expectations for Oklahoma City was like, I don't know, they might be a play-in team yeah. coming into the season. Yeah. Now they're fighting for the number one seed. I mean, you have to give Shea an argument there. So you know, the more you talk, Shea probably should get the. He edge should here. really just, right just on on just the magnitude of the achievement. He came <laughs> back, he missed a couple of games. Now he comes back and scores forty. Yeah, I mean, maybe he should get it. I don't have preseason. Where did you have Oklahoma? Where, where did you, like, three said you probably had them, oh, they'll make the playoffs. No. Now they're a contender. Like, Shea really should be MVP when you look at it like that. Yeah. I mean, seriously, well, so. On, we did it right. We did a topic on April 1st, April Fool's Day. It's like April yeah. Fool's, Oklahoma City's in first place in the <laughs> West. Yeah, okay. so, like, when I look now at those factors, and I know I said Joker, but I, I have to rethink this, like, Shea checks all the boxes. Top team in the league. Statistically, he is, yeah. uh, look what he's doing, 30 a game. And then when I look at his supporting cast, and this is not a knock to their supporting no. cast. They don't get the shine that they should get. And maybe one day Shet will be an all-star or Jalen Williams will be an all-star, but they aren't right, they're not right now. No, he's doing more with like, less, but I feel like Joker has the momentum because he's carrying it from a year ago. He just won a championship. I mean, and he's a baller. Because people know who he is. It, yeah, that's what I'm Oklahoma's saying. Oklahoma's not on national television. <clears throat> Nobody talks about I don't see, I don't, I'm not in the streets and I see a Shea Gilgis jersey on. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. no, only no. in Oklahoma. Joker you see got it. commercials now. <laughs> yeah, Joker man. So maybe no. that is the guy, man, now that I think about it. I tweeted last night, Joker probably sold up the MVP because he dominated the 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 best defensive player supposedly in he the did. league. He scored 41. On 80% shooting. Oh, well, yeah. I, <laughs> so you gotta help, you gotta educate me one day on, <laughs> on, on him being the best defensive player because I mean every time I watch him, it looks like people get cooked. buckets on him. Cooked. He get cooked. <laughs> every time. Every time I don't get it though. But you gotta educate me. You have to pull me to the side and just educate me. Because every time I'm watching him, I'm like, this is the best cooked. defensive player? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know, but so... Yeah, Wimby looked like the best defensive player to me. I think he is. I think Wimby should be de defensive player of the year. I mean, this guy gets numerous eight blocks a game. Man. Like, uh, on multiple Nobody's occasions. Nobody's afraid to go down low on Wimby <laughs> He just stopped there. a three-on-one break. He, like... <laughs> they're scared to death to go in the paint on Wimby, and Wimby 100 pounds. They just right. won't do it. Yeah, the Spurs have by far the worst record in the West. Yeah. By far. It don't have nothing to do with his defense because yeah. he's an intimidating, imposing factor in the middle. They go up, they go, oh, I, I think I'm going to just keep going to the other side. <laughs> yeah. All right. We, we did the Dallas Mavericks. Now it's time for the Dallas Wow Boys. The Cowboys are stuck in the contractual mud. Jerry, are you awake?
Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.